So Tilted Towers has long been heralded as one of the most iconic elements of the Fortnite map. And so when you think of Fortnite, you think of Tilted, you know, a fast and frenetic area that is always going to be filled to the brim with action. But was Tilted always held in such high esteem? Like how did it get to be the idolized POI it is today? Bunch of Crunch Army, where you at? Your motivation guy is back. Today we're going to be uncovering the story of Tilted Towers, Fortnite's most iconic point of interest. Here we go. So while Tilted may now be considered one of the most iconic areas in Fortnite's history, that wasn't always the case. In fact, there was a time when Tilted wasn't even a part of the original Fortnite island. And so when Fortnite was launched in 2017, the map was incredibly basic. There were only 13 named points of interest. Flush Factory and Greasy Grove made up the southwest corner of the map. Pleasant Park, Loot Lake, and Anarchy Acres made up the northwest corner. Tomato Town, Dusty Depot, Retail Row, Lonely Lodge, and the Wailing Woods Woods were up in the northeast and then finally salty springs fatal fields and moisty mire were all in the southeast and so the majority of the map was just trees and fields at the beginning this basic form was how the map would stay until the 17th of january 2018 when fortnite was updated with season two this was perhaps the biggest update that fortnite had ever seen and a ton of new areas were added to the map now we had areas like snobby shores to the far west hunted hills and junk junction up in the northwest corner shifty shafts just to the east of Greasy Grove, and of course, Tilted Towers right near the center of the map below Loot Lake. Tilted Towers was like nothing Fortnite had ever seen before. We'd experienced small towns like Salty Spring and Pleasant Park before, but never had Fortnite included an area that was basically a big built-up city. So with a POI like this came certain kinks in in-game design. Cities are, by nature, tight and dense. Skyscrapers have multiple floors, apartments have numerous rooms. In other words, there was a lot of vertical space to fill and there would need to be a lot of loot to fill it. Tilted Towers became the go-to hot drop spot for the entire Fortnite community the moment it was added to the game because of that denseness. And so there was plenty of loot to go around and players were eager to try and hover over it. And so when all the areas were first added to the game, you would often see over half the lobby dropping there. And that didn't really change over time. And that's why at release, the addition of Tilted Towers was actually seen to be pretty controversial. When Tilted was added to the game, it completely reshaped the flow of how Fortnite was played. A majority of the combat all happened right at the start of the game in Tilted Towers. Everybody just wanted to go there to get a piece of the action. And it threw the balance of the game right off. Off. And so enter the comment. If you were one of Fortnite's early adopters and you were already playing the game in Chapter 1 Season 3, then you're going to have been around for Fortnite's very first in-game event. So over the course of Season 3, a comment seemed to draw closer and closer to the Fortnite Island, and the leading theory became that the comment would eventually crash down into the Fortnite Island and just obliterate Tilted Towers. This was all supported by the fact that a bunch of telescopes had appeared on the map, pointing straight toward Tilted. But when the dust settled, it turned out that Tilted had never been the true destination of the comet. It had been Dusty Depot the entire time. That didn't mean that Tilted had escaped the event unscathed. When Tilted was first added to the map, okay, so there was a small three-story building right next to the main skyscraper of the POI. At the start of Season 4, a part of the comet split off and impacted the building, wiping most of it out. And according to Donald Mustard on a Marvel podcast, they had originally planned to wipe Tilted out, but later changed the impact location to Dusty Depot to really troll the Fortnite community, did all the mean and rumors that had been going around. And so over the course of season four, demolition crews arrived and slowly cleared the rest of the building so a replacement could be built. And so at the start of season five, we found out that the new building was going to be a sporting goods store. But unfortunately, it appeared that the building was cursed and the sporting goods store was not going to be sticking around for that long. Enter Kevin the Cube, who rode straight over the store as the arcane entity swept through the area at the end of the season. And so throughout season six, Tilted was left alone. The crushed building site was ignored and the the rest of the city just kind of seemed to stay the same. People were still dropping there as much as ever though, but the controversy had kind of died off by this point, and people had accepted Tilted as a much-loved area on the Fortnite map. It had gone from being something severely controversial to just basically becoming like the heart and soul of Fortnite. And so the next change to the area wouldn't occur until Season 7, and it would once again be that very same three-story building. Work had once again begun on building a new building, and this time it ended up being a new studio. Unfortunately, whoever had been 
place in charge of building the new studio had clearly cut some corners because at the end of that year's winter event, when the snow had melted from around Tilted, cracks could clearly be seen forming on the studio building. And so when the earthquake event occurred at the end of the season, the building crumbled once again. You think at this point, the people in the Fortnite Island probably would have got the hint. Maybe the building wasn't just meant to exist, right? Because it all had been destroyed enough times after all. Well, that wasn't the case because in season eight, no sweat insurance came along to claim the spot. This was the very last time that that three-story building would be rebuilt, <laughs> but it wasn't the last time it would be destroyed. In fact, at the end of season eight, Fortnite players finally got to see something that was hinted all the way back in season three. The destruction of Tilted Towers had finally come to pass, all due to the unvaulting event. So the unvaulting event took place on May 4, 2019, over two years after Tilted had originally been added to the map. Players were allowed to choose something to unvault, ranging from bouncers to the drum gun, grappler, infinity blade, planes, and the tactical SMG. Players chose the drum gun to return, and it was immediately unvaulted. And so after being sent back to the island, however, it turned out that the volcano that was on the map had been adversely affected by the unvaulting and was now erupting. So players floated above the map in their gliders, helpless, as they watched half a retail row get destroyed. Polar Peak get cracked and tilted towers get wiped out entirely, except for one building. Can you guess which one? Yep. Yeah it's the no sweat insurance. Now, of course, while it was just cool to see Tilted wiped off the face of the map, Epic Games obviously knew that they couldn't just wipe off the fan favorite location away forever. It had become far too well loved. So in season nine, Fortnite took a step forward into the future and Neil Tilted was born. This replacement for the classic version of Tilted took the area straight into the future, updating all the buildings into futuristic neon laden versions of themselves. And so this area was bordered by its very own slipstream network, which allowed players to whiz around the area in moments. And so while people were obviously sad about losing the original Tilted Towers, Neo Tilted was a pretty cool replacement. You know, Epic managed to slingshot the area of the map into the future while also retaining the classic Tilted vibe that everybody had come to know and love. Unfortunately, we only got to keep Neo Tilted for just one season because in Season X, Tilted was set to drastically change once again. And so in Season X, the big map changes were mostly caused by Rift Beacons. And at the very first of these to activate was at Tilted Towers. And so this area of the map was thrown back Back in time from the futuristic Neo Tilted back to Tilted Town. Tilted Town was the strangest change the Fortnite map had ever seen. Not only did it have an old timey western aesthetic, if you entered the bubble around the area, you know, all of a sudden you would just be unable to build or break anything. It was a massive change for the game and it felt like nothing Fortnite had ever tried before. But this wasn't the only change that Tilted Towers area of the map would see. Because on the 21st of September 2019, that area would change in a yet another crazy way as it went from being Tilted Town to Gotham City. So Gotham City was completely different to every tilted version that came out before it. Sure, some elements carried over, but most of the area was completely different. You know, there was now a city hall, you know, a bank, and a cinema. And the classic Tilted Towers clock tower had disappeared completely. And so this version of Tilted Towers would stick around until the end of Season X, and then, like the rest of the map, it was sucked away by the black hole. As Twilight said on Chapter 1 and Don Rose on Chapter 2, Tilted Towers was nowhere to be seen in any of his forms. The most iconic area in Fortnite had been wiped away entirely, had been replaced by other cities like Point of Interest, like, you know, Sweaty Sands and Lazy Lake. We would also get to visit a version of Tilted Towers again for just over a year when finally Salty Towers would show up on the map. And so as a result of the unstable zero point, Tilted Towers had been resurrected and only now it had been mashed together with Salty Springs to create a strange new POI that combines some of the best elements from both of the POIs. The clock tower was back guys, as was the giant seven story tower that used to sit at the center of Tilted and a big office block. The sweatiest drop spot on the map was back and people absolutely loved it. Unfortunately, Salty Towers didn't stick around for too long. The zero point erupted and changed the landscape of the map into a primal landscape with its reality wave. Salty Towers became the Boney Bird. This version of Tilted had a lot in common with its Salty Towers counterpart, only now everything looks ancient and primal. You know, players don't really seem to like it as much as the original Salty Towers and nowhere near as much as they did with Tilted, but it honestly fills us up with a lot of hope. And so if Epic were willing to revamp the area instead of just getting rid of it, hey, maybe that means Tilted is now destined to stay on the Chapter 2 Island for good. 
it may not have been there at the very beginning. It may have been missing, you know, for four of chapter two seasons. But the fact of the matter is that, you know, when you think of Fortnite, you're probably going to think of the fun, exciting, and chaotic location of Tilted Towers. It's been changed a lot over the years, and it's seen a lot of fair share of destruction. But now it's back, hopefully, and hopefully good to stay. Well, Bunch of Carnage Army, that was the story of Tilted Towers. And so if you're interested in watching even more stories about Fortnite and the pros who play it, then you have to subscribe and hit that bell button because we have so much more amazing content coming out. You know I believe in you guys. And in order to really persevere, keep your mind and keep your heart on the prize. You know, keep your heart on the vision and you will succeed. If you want even more motivation, connect with me on my Instagram at your motivation guy. I'm so proud of you guys. I'll see you soon. Peace.